All right, you guys hear the sound of glass breaking and gunshots going off at the window. Boy chummers, before we get started, if you enjoy our content, do us a favor and give it a like if you're watching on YouTube or rate the episode if you're listening on your favorite audio platform. Those interactions do go a long way in getting this out to other like-minded Shadowrun individuals. We did hit our goal of 500 subscribers on YouTube, and that is all thanks to you guys. Thank you so much. Really, couldn't have done it without you. Now, we're trying to shoot for 500 more. Let's get it. With that out of the way, last time we were all together with these crew of miscreants, they finally got to put an end to one of the people that's been chasing and terrorizing them as he became street pizza underneath the heavy wheels of a large vehicle. Moment of silence. Okay, that's over. After that, they received a phone call from a certain other individual that is in possession of a certain mysterious book that has also been plaguing the team. <laughs> Will they go and finally put an end to this chapter? You'll have to stay tuned and see for yourselves. But before that, let's take a word from the sponsor. You ever wanted to play Shadowrun? You know, the cyberpunk tabletop game where man meets magic and machine. It's too hard though, right? Too crunchy? Too clunky? It's a lot of math. Wrong. Pink Fohawk is a Shadowrun second edition actual play podcast played by the rules, but fast and loose with all the 80s cyberpunk edginess you know and love where the hair is big and the explosions are bigger. Follow the story of two rad Shadowrunners making a name for themselves in the mean streets of 2053 Seattle. Tina Bone Meal, nine and a half feet of pure troll muscle surveillance expert and aspiring actress. John Anderson, former company man with a resume shrouded in mystery and a black belt Nikito. Check out Pink Fohawk Podcast, available everywhere you listen to podcasts. Welcome back, guys. You're all set for today's run, final chapter, part one. I, I don't know. What do you want to call this one? Revenge to Electric Boogaloo? The Revenge 2, Electric Boogaloo. There we go. I can't run, so no. Power yeah. s skitter, power slide in. I, I don't know. Lickety clack down the down the sidewalk or well, let's just pick up where we left off there. You had just raided that little apartment or the small suburban home in Bellevue. You ran over a man on a public street, um, and then reversed over him and then ran away. The sounds of sirens were closing in on you. And you have an unconscious spider in the back seat of the car. Well, then, so uh, everybody's kind of holding on for dear life as you get jostled around because there's no seats. So where to, huh? If I don't give instructions, I'm taking everybody home because I haven't heard any of this conversation or any of the other stuff that has been going on. All I know is that there's a guy shooting a machine gun and I ran him over because that's what you do when people are shooting at your friends. So yeah, that's what you do. I'm I'm headed back for the house with everybody in the back. Does anyone want to protest this at all or you all are just along for the ride pretty much? All right, so I'll be in the back checking on Spider, trying to see if I can get her to wake up and I will fill a maging in on uh, who was on the phone. First, for checking on Spider, roll me uh, your first date. She's not going to make it. I, my highest was a five. She's obviously dying. Yes, you think she's dying. So there you go. You go to do first aid and you can't find a pulse. You think Spider is definitely dying. So I don't know if you would then go ahead and fill a maging in with. Do, do, you, uh, say, do you say that she's yeah, dying? I think, she, I think she's dying. Guys, I think she's dying. Okay. As, as, soon, as, uh, as soon as he starts saying that, uh, you feel the van or the Roadmaster pick up speed and hit like an e-brake turn, throwing you guys against the side of the van and then take off down the next street. And then uh, over the uh, the comms, 
hospital or street doc. Street doc. Yeah, street doc. But if she was dying, um, question. Yeah. When when someone has a dock wagon contract, is there like a medical mm -hmm. alert bracelet or something that they'd have on or some device? It on is them? a bracelet that they wear around their wrist usually. Think of it kind of like a, an Apple Watch or Fitbit that monitors your your vital signs and everything. Okay, I have one of those too. I'm mm -hmm. gonna flip hers around and see if it's got any kind of diagnostic readout. Cool. What dock wagon contract? We both have them. Yeah, you're wearing yours. She's not wearing hers. Mm, nope. Oh dear. Okay then. Uh, so yeah, whenever I hear that, I'm gonna shoot Hans Lindenberger's uh, location to. You're welcome. Uh, to the ghost. Okay. I'm also gonna drop a little bit of a heal spell on Spider, just because why would we not have done that? Anyways, go uh, go right ahead. Well, you know, maybe if you guys didn't have so much fragging metal inside of you, your guys, maybe we could actually do something. You know, we need nanobots or something. They should make something like that. Do they make something like that? Like auto repair nanobot? That sounds like it should be a thing. I say probably dying from drain. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, drain. <laughs> Don't forget drain. All right, well, Ghost, you get uh, the location sent to you directly from a maging of a street dock that is, I guess, the closest one. You're still headed towards the Barrens. Luckily, you're already in Bellevue district, so it's only one district over. Yeah, you, you guys, again, uh, you just hear, hang on, and you feel the van uh, again do like a crazy e-brake turn and start going back the other way so that it can hit the freeway since we just passed it up. In the, mean, in the meantime, you hear the, so the sounds of sirens getting closer, like you're still well within the vicinity. Uh, but yeah, you make it onto the highway and make your way down into the Redmond area directly to the location of this street dock without any kind of, of issue. You're blowing past cars and everything in the Roadmaster. Most people are getting out of your way when they see you encroaching up on them <laughs> in the rear view. Yeah, I'm flashing um, headlights and all that, you know? Yeah, you guys, you guys in the back are getting jostled back and forth and it's probably the bumpiest, most uncomfortable ride you've ever experienced in this vehicle. Uh, do you come to a screeching halt when you get there or are you gonna gradually slow down or? No, I'm gonna gradually slow down so okay. as not to draw too much attention. Or damage people in the back or further damage people. <laughs> no, just draw too much attention. Okay, just worrying about the attention. Yeah. Got it. So it's at a old meat packing plant, wasn't it? Last time we were here? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, you guys, you show up, you're, you're here at the location. I'll hop out, holding Spider. Uh, lead the way, wizards. Let's go through the front door. Tell, tell them I'm aging sent you. All right, I'll uh, take her in. Okay. Is there, I mean, I, I, mean it, I doubt this guy's got a receptionist. So, uh, he he hello? Uh, some big guy walks out of the, bla the back draped plastic with a butcher's apron, surgical mask, and there's blood splattered all over him. Looks like he's about six feet tall, human, bl blondish hair. Uh, sir, if you would please um, help my wife. She's um, not not doing so hot. I can't find a pulse. Leads you back past some uh, slaughter tables. There's meat on hooks. Uh, and he takes you back to a freezer and punches in a code and then opens the door. And walks inside, rushes inside. And Again, gesturing you for gesturing for you to follow. Yep, I'll follow. Uh, once you get inside here, uh, it's a actual clean, pristine room. It's an operating suite. Pulls off the the mask, throws it into a a, a bin, it's taking off the blood soaked apron, putting on a trying to get a surgical gown on. How bad are the wounds? Where are the wounds on the body? Yeah, multiple contusions to the head and neck region. Uh, she got she got roughed up by some by some goons. Goes around just like popping her eyes open, flashing lights. How long has the patient been unconscious? Uh, unsure. Okay, you need to get out of here now, and I will work my magic. Okay. Um, when you're done with her, uh, I do have a bullet that needs to be removed, as and I'll I'll wait outside and update the rest of the team. Okay, and so. 
he pushes you out the door and shuts the door and starts going to work. Uh, a few minutes later, somebody else comes up and goes into the room, also in surgical gear as well. Uh, you're going to be waiting there for about 20 minutes before he comes back out. How 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 is she? What's 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 the problem? Oh, just just the normal. There's just some some bruising, uh, concussion, mild. Can I can I see her? Broken ribs, fractured hand. She'll be fine. Can I see her? She's currently asleep. All right. Well, can you do anything about this? And I'll pull my jacket to the side where I got peppered with. Uh, Buckshot. Uh, he digs around in one of his pockets, slaps two tongue depressant sticks into your mouth sideways. Bite down on this. Okay. And then he grabs a pair of those forceps, forceps, scissors, and just pulls <laughs> all the shot out one after another, just really fast too, like very precise. His hand doesn't shake, just pop, 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 pop. Thanks, thanks, Doc. Um, do, you, do you have any antiseptic? Some back teen or something? Digs around on his uh, back pocket, shakes something that looks like it's in an aerosol can. Oh, this is gonna hurt worse. It stings like all get out. And then he just slaps your chest with some kind of bandage. Just, hey, thanks. How much do I owe you? We'll, we'll wait for your friend to wake up and then we can talk about how much you're going to pay me. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I'll keep them posted as to her status that she's just sleeping and not, in fact, dead. Well, I'm going to like take like a quick power nap uh, to heal my stun. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just did the roll, so it'll take me 15 minutes to, to heal, that, uh, heal that stun. So a 15 minute power nap and the maging is back to full strength. I'll just keep pacing outside the room like I'm waiting on like uh, a new baby to arrive or something. Probably puffing on a cigar. Spider, you want to roll your body against target number six. See how long it'll take you to naturally heal. Okay, you'll be fully healed in... Or you'll be down from moderate to light through natural healing in five days. Keeping the streak alive, guys. Keeping the streak alive with me rolling my body tests. Hey, wounds take their toll, okay? Uh, after about an hour or so, Spider, you'll start to come to your... You've got a bright light shining on you, which is almost what you remember the last time before you went unconscious. There's a bright light, lots of pain, and guys yelling at you. Only now there's just bright light and the soft... The, it doesn't matter. The I see the bright light. I, I sit up punching at anything. <laughs> In fact, I sit up swinging. Okay, so you you sit up suddenly and you immediately hurt from your ribs from you sitting, going to the sitting position from laying. There's a immense discomfort and pain that you feel as you swing at air and you just you just hear somebody shouting, nine, 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 nine. Oh my God, I've gone back in time. Do I see it? Do I see the the person behind? Yeah, the voice? there's a there's a man, a large, a large man. He's got surgical mask and he's still wearing the uh, uh, the surgery gown, but he's trying to restrain you down on the bed, shouting at you. Uh, in I I shout back at him. Where's uh Where's Dorian? How did I get here? What like? very confused, but still believing that this is somehow part of the torture. I mean, he's he's shouting, and then there you can hear the shouting in the room as well. I just charge in. Okay. You see the doctor is trying to restrain Spider onto the bed as she is getting up and looks like she's trying to struggle and throw hands. Whoa, 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 whoa. Doc, let me handle this. She might kill you. And I'll grab Spider firmly by the shoulders. Just look at me, focus. You're fine, you're safe. You can headbutt me if you want. As hilarious as that would be, I'm not gonna headbutt you. What happened? Where's Dorian? Why, how did I get here? What? What's going on? You were unconscious. We rescued you. Uh, Ghost and I took the garbage out. Dorian won't be a problem anymore. Like he 
you mean it, right? Oh yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah, I'd take you to see what's left of him, but there's a lot of action going on at that house because uh, I burned it down. Not on purpose. Accidental burning. Where's everybody else? Waiting for you. All right. Sorry, Doc. Get up gingerly. Start walking towards the door. Sure. Uh, the other thing you're going to notice is that your left hand, you're having trouble opening and closing your hand, and it's been wrapped as well. This could prove to be an issue. Just maybe. Brace the rifle on your forearm from now on. And uh, bright lights still kind of bother you from the concussion. But yeah, you can limp on out of there. So, Spider, you I told you about your wounds and <laughs> the new feelings and sensations that you get to experience. Yay! But you're able to walk out of the street dock, walk out of the uh, the back room through the meat processing area and back out to the Roadmaster, where the rest of the group is waiting. So you guys will see Spider walk back out. Yay, Spider's alive. We uh, did it, team. Thanks for coming after me. I appreciate it. Hope nobody got hurt in the process. Only Bear did. None of us, really. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, if it was Bear, that's fine. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's yeah, fine. But no, really. Thanks for coming after me. You could have just left me. I saw the thing explode the window from down there, and then I don't remember much. Yeah, just yeah. abandon one of our own. So, uh, what did what did Vinny want, Bear? So apparently, uh, Dorian was supposed to drop off a key. Uh, probably not getting that back, uh, even if he actually had it. But Vinny is uh, completely insane. Um, and he's trying to get into this book. And Dorian was supposed to drop off a key. Oh, he's and not getting I, that key because I have the key. Yeah. Uh, so I told him we would totally, definitely drop off the key. No problem. No questions asked. Uh, and he's going to ping me his location. So we can take care of him. You get a message uh, to Dorian's phone. Um. Is it just the location or is there more crazy? Uh, it's a location. It says bring key. We'll negotiate more upwards of 40K. Okay. Um, I'll pass that. I'll pass the message around to everybody. Seems awful light for a book that could like end the world. 40K. He wants the key. He has the book. Yeah. The book's useless without the key. Like dude could like end the world. A anyway. I feel like we're getting short shucked here and he's not getting the key anyway. We've wiped one dreadhead off the map tonight. Why not make it two? You know what? Two for two. I like it. Um, yeah. So uh, I've got the location. Do we want to like scroogle it and see what this place is so we can come up with some kind of. I'm, I'm going, going to get, get my van. van. Yeah, we should probably arm up. I'm, I'm going, going, I'm going to get the van on the boom boom. Sounds good. On the, on the way back to Asgard, I'll fill everybody in. And, you know, Spider had her thanks. But, you know, thank thank you guys, really, for your help in dealing with that guy. He's been plaguing us since we left the UK. He finally won't be a problem anymore. And it's thanks to you guys. You're telling me that not only did I get you the location of your kidnapped wife, help you rescue her, run your mortal nemesis over, and save her life by getting her to a street dock, that, wait, I did all those things? Yes. Okay, that's you're, like... You're a hero. That's like four favors you owe me? Yeah. Absolutely. I'll be in touch. Uh, does anybody have a pillow I can sit on? Or I mean, Agent always has a pillow. That's how he gets around everywhere. <laughs> yeah, my spare inflatable pillow in my back pocket right now. Uh, oh, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> it's, it's my pull cord for the uh, emergency exits. So you guys can make it back to Asgard with a little resistance to anything. Everything seems to be going... Same as usual. Hey, Spanner. You busy? Just sitting in his hammock, just doing nothing, just playing around on his phone. All right, look, here's some new yen. I want you to get out of here, go meet up with Joy. Drex about to get pretty weird, and uh, I think uh, it's probably better if, you know, I know that you're safe and don't have to worry about you. So I'm going to have you go meet up with her. You guys look out for each other, and I'll catch up with you after I'm done handling some business here. Okay, you sure we're going to talk again, though, right? Yeah, 
I, I don't want you to do anything stupid without me. I, I always do stuff that's stupid, but, you know, this one I'm going to have to do it alone because... He gestures to the mortar car. <laughs> Expressly gestures towards the mortar car. Hey, listen, like, there's a lot that I can't do without your help, buddy, and I appreciate everything from you. This is one thing I can do for you is just make sure that you're not going to get all wound up in all this nonsense because I really don't know how it's going to play out. I probably won't die, but I don't know about anybody else. If you think it's going to be safer, then if I don't hear from you in a few days, I'm coming back to find out. All right, you got a deal. All right, get out of here. Good luck. And he heads out. Hey, right, uh, Spider, I mean, how, like, capable do you feel with your gun still? Um... I still like my chances. Okay. All right. I'll take your word for it. Um, and then on Spider, I'm going to drop an Enhance Aim. Minus two to target number when it comes to shooting. So it takes a, about an hour or so to drive. You get to the location. It's a warehouse that's near the docks in the Tacoma District. Ghost, hey, do you have tools back here? No, they're like, in the garage. That's what a garage is for. <laughs> wow. He's got you there. Um, Checkmate. Spider, give me a rifle bullet. Okay. Hands him a rifle bullet. Something roughly key-shaped, so I can BS if I have to. I can palm it. I don't... I feel like a rifle bullet and a key don't look really similar in any way. You know what? Just go with it. I've got the rifle bullet. I feel like we should have just brought like a key, like just any other normal key. <laughs> Aren't we just going to shoot this Whoops. guy when we see him? Are we negotiating? What's happening? Like, are we not just going in guns blazing? Maybe we should discuss that. I'm sorry. I now realize we don't actually have a plan. Like, are we not just killing this dude? Like, what's happening? Like, I figured we just walk in the door. The we just start shooting people. Like, you guys kind can of kill everybody else finny's so, mine okay so like if so you just want like a 1v1 do we respect the 1v1 or like do you just want us to watch if he gets the upper hand then yes shoot him so okay. we're cheating like you want us to cheat just be, don't let him speak directly to you he's got some adept powers that uh should have brought you remember, oh you yeah. remember what loki did it's makes it's a lot worse themselves. Oh, <laughs> I saw that one time. He made a guy kill himself right in front of me. That's pretty funny. Point. We should have brought some like duct tape to throw on there, like cover his mouth or something like that. So amazing. I'm not going to interfere unless it looks like he's getting the upper hand. This is your fight. You're 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 leading the charge here. You tell me what you want and I'll do it. You're going to do the talking because if he sees me, it's going to spook him. All right. So we are talking. OK, glad we discussed this. Hey, look, just full disclosure, if threat goes sideways in there, I'm just blowing the building up. Well, just I trust this. It wouldn't could... be the first time a building has blown up around me. Well, um, doesn't look like there's anybody walking around outside the building. You guys are there. Take a peek in the astral. There, is there any watcher spirits? Is there warding on the warehouse? No warding, no watcher spirits. Background count of plus one. Of course it is. It feels really bad to look at in the astral. What kind of vantage point do I get if I'm staying on top of the car? The windows that are there are definitely blacked out, like covered in black paint. Does it look like it's high enough to be two stories? Mm, it could possibly have a second story. And there is like a fire escape to go up to another door. Okay, cool. That's where I'm going in. I'm going to tag along with you. Okay. I'm going with Bear, and I'm, I'm putting a mask on. And going straight into the, the front door, basically. I'm waiting for everyone else to get into position. Okay. I'm going to undock all of my drones. Do my standard, like, two-by-two two orbit with the flyers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to see if I can turn the uh, the back of the van so that it's facing the, uh, the actual, like, uh, building, the warehouse. Okay. Yeah, just in case I needed a Swiss cheese, the corrugated metal siding of this place um and then just keep rover out and ready to go in okay uh spider and auto you can climb the 
fire escape pretty easily and you get up to the door. Is it open? No. Of course not. Uh, hmm. Got any uh, ideas for getting through this? I don't want to Kool-Aid man it myself, given that I'm already pretty broken. Nope. I don't specialize in melting doors. So <clears throat> we could um, awkwardly just walk back to the main group and pretend like there was actually never a door here. Yeah, there was actually... <laughs> pretend like it never happened. Um, you. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I I'll try to kick it down. I might get lucky. I might get lucky. Let's see. Let's see. Sure. Roll me a strength test. Factor in that you are, uh, you're wounded right now, right? Uh -huh. So your target number for this, uh, factoring your wound value of moderate, which would add a plus two. Where's my barrier readings? Uh, okay, you're looking at uh, target number six. You can boot the door, door open, but it does make a loud noise. Yeah, well, you know. As it <laughs> crashes, as it crashes open. Bear and imaging, you can hear the door being kicked open. Oh, direct. Go, 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 go. And I'll barge into the warehouse and, uh... All right, uh, imaging bear is being extremely loud and... I have brought the item! Where's my money? Well, first things first, when you walk in, it's very dark. There are no lights on. Uh, there are stacked boxes that you can initially see from the street lights outside that give you brief illumination and you can just hear kind of a loud tapping somewhere in the warehouse and when you're shouting that you've brought the item you just get a voice just kind of floats on the air it sounds really nice come on in ears off thermo eyes on and i'll hand signal to a majoring like come on Oh, I want to be like looking in the astral since there's low light here. Sure. Uh, feels bad while you're doing it. It's just like this. While you're looking in the astral, everywhere you look almost has like a inky tendril rim around it. You know, like you're looking through ink water, sort of. That's what it feels like for you as well, Otto, since you're dual natured constantly. So this is what you're seeing. There you go. As the two of you enter in onto kind of a, a catwalk that's upstairs, there's boxes piled up. Some have fallen over. The occasional devil rat chewing on something as they're, they're piled up here. But you can get to an edge uh, of railing that kind of looks down into the the greater area of the warehouse. It's just that there are there's no lights on anywhere. I'd like to ping the group with a text message and let them know I have my ears off. But if they text message me, it will show up in my image link. So I can stay in communication, but I can't hear anything. All right, so all of you get a text message. Do you check to see what it is? No. Okay, well, obviously you don't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will. And then uh, I will quietly relay <laughs> to Otto, who's next to me. Okay, I'll just not talk to Bear. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Otto, as you get closer to the railing, wow. when you look over, since you can yes. see in the astral naturally, uh, you can spot an entity or a person sitting, and they have a lot of funky stuff wrong with them. Like their astral signature looks wrong. Ooh, boy. Can I see a maging and all of them? Like, are they in the same vicinity you, as us? You can spot them. Uh, obviously, it's harder to see Bear in here because right. he doesn't shine very bright in the astral <laughs> because he 
has too much cyberware and with the background count makes it harder to, to spot him but you can pick out a maging you can see cool. that they're they're not too far away these two essences aren't too far away from each other okay i'm just gonna like reach over and like while staring downward like slap spider on the arm text amazing astral text amazing astral text amazing astral I the group chat, the group chat, the group chat. Fix the group chat okay. astral question mark. <laughs> uh, amazing, as you're walking around, kind of feeling your way around in, in the dark here, <laughs> I'm, I'm, or looking I'm, in the astral, I'm like, yeah, I'm looking. You're, you're making your way through. You get another, you feel your phone buzz again. Do, do you stop and answer it, or do you just keep going? Hey, uh, auto evens or odds? Uh, always tell me the odds. Ah, you should have picked the evens. Uh, no, I do not. Okay. I, I said evens, my bad. <laughs> well, we tried, I, I folks. messed up the saying. <laughs> we tried. Continuing along, eventually the boxes give way and you're you're seeing more of an open area and there's a person, entity, you can't really tell. Their aura is just ugh, to look at. Is it a hey, kind of familiar... Oh, sorry. Is it, it, is it kind of like a familiar aura? It is, it is kind of familiar, yeah. You feel like you have seen it before. Where have I seen it before? Long ago, when you were part of the the mafia gang and, and up and coming. Okay, so it's 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 Vinny. Did you, you bring, bring me the key? key? Um, I'll look at a majoring for confirmation because I can't hear what the guy says. <laughs> yeah, you're deaf. I'm just gonna look at a majoring and shrug. I'm, I'm just gonna look at you confused because I, I don't know that your ears are off. <laughs> Oh, this group. Oh, wow. oh so great. We're so good. Um, can I have the key? I'll give you the money and you can get out of here. They haven't turned to looking your direction at all. I'll uh, I'll step forward gingerly and just stand there. I won't say anything. I want I want the guy to turn around so I can see his mouth. Well, you have thermal vision on, so you're not really seeing his. You're just seeing a blob. Of I'm just seeing it. Yeah, an yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't turn. He just he's just sitting there. Look back at a majoring. We want to see the money first. The uh, the 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 boss didn't want us to come here and get mugged. You just see these arms come up over there, over his head, and he clicks a button, and some little red LED lights show up in the darkness. There you go, money. Give me the key. Okay, um, hey, give me like a really high willpower check to not do something. Well, what is it that you want to do? And I'll determine the willpower check here. Uh, not cast fireball right at him. Oh, okay. Well, that would be the detriment to the entire party as you're in a warehouse possibly full of flammable stuff. You have no idea what's in any of these boxes. So, uh, let's go willpower eight, huh? That's usually what they have to resist when they go into combat monsters. So, yeah, seems, seems appropriate. I'm getting ready to put the hand up to do it, and I just... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn and be like, let's turn to bear and all right, there's the money. Go get it. When a maging gestures towards the guy, uh -huh. I'll uh, kind of slowly walk forward, reaching into my pocket for the key. Uh huh. And when I get, uh, can I stop when I'm about um, 15 feet away? Sure. I'll say toss it same time and I'll hold up the palmed bullet. Sure. <laughs> Whatever you say, chum. Reach back to throw. He and wings his hand up. I'll toss. The, I'll let the bullet go. Okay. Uh, scamper back to a maging. I don't even care about the cred stick at this point. All right. Well, this is for both the mages then that are watching in the astral. Uh, both items get whisked back to him in midair. You right. you see in the astral. You see an and you see in either a spirit or an elemental. Like, grab both objects and bring it back to him, and then back in his hand. Oh. Say, chum, this doesn't look like a key. I think that you're trying to cheat me. And you hear the ting of a object being flicked away from him as it hits the ground and kind of rattles, rolls away. Donald Keys are what they, they appear to be. You, you know that, right? You know magic works, right? Say, your voice sounds real familiar. Where are you from? 
here and there. And then uh, I'll I'll mention the uh, the old club that the that we used to hang out in. <clears throat> so you mentioned that place. You mentioned mm. Jimmy's Bistro. That's a long time ago. Pretty sure most people from there are uh, dead or moved on. You sure about that? Oh, I'm very sure. And Tony, Mario, old Vinny. That, that was the place to be back in the days. Then people started disappearing. Yeah, it's weird how that happened. People just <laughs> up and vanished. Especially these two guys I used to know, they disappeared. Real sad, could have used them. Would have been real nice to have them around for what's to come. I wonder what is chilling out right now. So, you got that key for me? Uh, can I, I'm going to switch off Ash Roll and turn on low light. Can I take a look at like, can I like glance at the boxes in low light and see what they're marked as? Uh, yeah, a lot of them, some of them are as fragile, some, uh, some don't have any markings at all. You got that key for me, old pal? I got them show tunes, Vinny. And then I hurl fireball. So all of this happens lickety split. Majin goes to throw fireball directly at Vinny. Uh, Vinny kind of throws his arms up like this at the same time, and the fireball hits but seems to go around him instead of hitting him directly. At the same time, Bear dives for a crate of boxes off to the side and pops his trigger. Uh, Otto, you wanted to cast a spell? Yes, I'm casting uh, Decrease Reflexes. Okay. Uh, and then Spider, uh, what did you want to do? You I'm gonna succeed. need all the help I can get, so I'd like to pop my reflex trigger. And uh, is there a railing on the yeah. second level? I'm going to brace my rifle as best I can on the edge of the railing. And that's it. <laughs> oh boy. All right, now we'll roll initiatives. Spider, start us off. I assume I see the fireball. Yeah, the fire so lights up the that room. Guy, so everything's yeah. lit up. Yes. Um, the fire provides uh, illumination enough for anybody that has uh, low light vision. Is there anybody else in the room that I notice? Because nope. Amazing said not to kill the big guy. Oh, okay, cool. Um, just, just this guy. Uh, let's call a shot to his knee. Let's we'll see if I can kneecap him. Okay. Spider, you aim, you get the shot, it looks like it's going right for his kneecap, and he just happens to instinctively take a step right before the bullet hits. So it goes right past his knee. But you do, it looks like you were dead on to make that shot. Next ones to go are, in fact, Ghost, Amazing, and Vinny all go at the same step. Uh, okay, so do I see anything? I've heard the shot clearly, so, right? Uh, well, you hear the shot, uh, and you can now see from your spy drone in there with the fire that has illuminated <laughs> the floor and started started to catch some of the boxes on fire. I'm going to... I guess I'm just going to delay my action. Okay. Uh, Amazing. what is your... What's your willpower? Uh, six. Okay. Uh, please roll me your willpower against target number six. You basically hear his voice deepen. Go home. And you just... I guess you would like reflect it back. Like you, the, the booming sound from his voice would be canceled out by your, uh, your magical deterrent. And then what would you like to do on your step? Are some of these crates catching fire? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm going to, I would like to try to distract him while casting Levitate on one of the crates to throw at his back. Benny, go get your fragged show tunes. And then as I'm doing that, I'm, I'm doing the Levitate. All right, you can Levitate a burning box. Burning box comes hurtling 
at Vinny's back. And two feet before it looks like it's going to hit him, the box is caught in midair and then gently placed on the ground. Was it by him or by something else? He didn't move. After that, Barrett is your turn. You have heard nothing. Through your thermographic vision, it is definitely getting brighter in here. I'm going to uh, shout to Ghost over the comms. Def, ears off, send back up now. And then I would like to shoot out one of the windows so that he can fly a drone inside. All right, you guys hear the sound of glass breaking and gunshots going off at the window. Ghost, would you like to undelay to do anything as you receive this message? Uh, yeah, I get the message, and uh, mm -hmm. through an unbroken window, you just see Rover crash through and hit the ground and roll. Okay. Crashes through another window, through a crate, rolls in onto the floor, and is now in the fray. I'm going to do the same thing again, try for the kneecap. You have the perfect lined up aimed shot. You go in, take the shot, and it's like he just instinctively knows to move his leg as the bullet again just whizzes by, just missing by the smallest of margin and impacting onto the floor. Ghost. All right, so what do I see now that I have eyes in there? The warehouse has started to catch fire. Boxes are starting to catch up. The fire is spreading. It looks like it was centered around this center area here. You can see a maging is squared off away from this guy that looks like Vinny. Just, he's slightly different. Just seeing him for the first time, it looks like he hasn't slept in days. Uh, his skin is kind of sunken and it looks a little more stretched onto his face like he's malnourished. He has the, the bags under his eyes. His hair is completely unkempt. He looks disheveled. But it's the same Vinny that you remember. He just looks a little worse for, for wear. You don't know where Bear is. You can't see him. And you can't see, you don't notice Spider and uh, Otto. Although from your ID tagging, you know that they're all in the warehouse. Okay, um, can I run Rover up into like very close range or whatever like the shortest range is? Sure, into short range? Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna shoot him with the shotgun. Fire away, sir. Three of you that can kind of see what's going on. <laughs> you see the Rover drone had dove into the room, and now looks around, runs over to the shortest distance, and then you just, see the mouth and and then uh, at that same moment a block of earth goes up in front of him as the shot impacts onto it in the astral is it a different spirit yep in the astral it is a different spirit at that same time amazing you see Vinny go like this to sling over his wonderful submachine gun that he had strapped to his side and fires a burst at you. You will dive out of the way as he fires his burst and you dive out of the way. Do you want evens or odds? Oh, never tell me the odds. Okay, you dive towards burning boxes. It is your turn. Yeah, as I dive out of the way, am I, am I in contact with the burning boxes or just next to them? No, you're just near them. Okay, uh, so I'm going to yeah, yell at the top of my lungs, Otto, separate the, ent the entity from Venny. I'm just going to scream that out loud, and then uh, looking into the Asheral uh -huh. for the uh, the Earth Elemental. Yeah. Or are we going to try banishing? Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> okay, you go to banish, it does not work. All right, uh, Otto. Well, you know, I'm going to take some inspiration. Uh, you keep those numbers in mind, because I'm also banishing. <laughs> You're trying to banish the Earth? There's two of them right now, right? There's two. One is the Earth Elemental. What's the other one doing? It's like a it's like a force field-ish? It's kinda? like catching things that are yeah. flying through the air. We're going to start. We're doing the Earth Elemental. Okay. Okay, cool. You have two net successes, which means Ooh. you can drop the Spirit's Force by two. 
And then I you can that. choose to either remain in the combat or stop. I'm going to remain in it. You're going to remain in the banishing. Okay. Uh, that goes to Bear. Can I roll perception to see if this guy has any of those weird little magic talismans that my magic using friends are so fond of? Like, it, does he have like an amulet on? Is there like a crystal ball on the desk? Can I take a look? Sure. Roll perception. The highest is a nine. You can't tell. Doesn't look like it. All right. I'd like to shoot his SMG. Okay. Trying to just disable the gun. All right. So you're called shotting the gun. Correct. All right. You take your shot at the gun and you're, you're dead on target. And he just happens to lean back a little bit so that your bullet passes just in front of the barrel of the SMG. Can I duck back behind my boxes? Yes, you can duck back behind your, your cover. All right, Spider. I'm going to try again, but this time I'm going to call shot to his hand. One of his hands. It's just, why not? Okay. Once again, your shot is perfectly aimed up. Ready to shoot. You got him lined up. You take your shot. And again, it's like he just knows when to turn at the right time as the bullet just seems to whiz right past him, impacting again into the ground. Ghost. Over the, the Vox, uh, I'm just gonna... Well, this isn't working. working. And uh, I'm just gonna rush him with the dog and try to, like, slam into him and knock him over. Okay. I figure if I can get him on the ground, maybe I can just, like, grab him and shake the baby. You have your drone dive directly at him. You're gonna pounce him onto the ground and pin him. And right as you make the leap to, to pounce... He takes two steps to the side and lands right next to him. Uh, spider, what is what is your willpower? Willpower is three. Okay, please roll me your willpower uh, against uh, target number seven and tell me your successes as a booming voice is heard out over the battle that just says, Shoot the mage. Spider. When we re-roll initiatives, wherever you are in the initiative phase, you will feel compelled to take a shot at the mage. That is amazing. Alright, who do I see in the immediate vicinity that could possibly shoot me? Uh, Bear is the only one, or the or Vinny himself, who still has the smart gun. Or not smart gun. He still has the SMG out. Okay. Uh, improved invisibility. Okay. And that will take us to the end of this first combat round. Congratulations. Ooh. Everybody's still alive. Oh, I, I do have one other thing I have to do uh, before we reroll initiative. And that is to let Otto know that he can no longer breathe. Gosh. Ghost, you are starting us off. Okay. So the rubber drone is right next to Vinny is right next to him. So I know exactly where he is. Yes. Okay. Um, can I use six words and delay my turn? Yep, six words are free action. Okay. I only need one. Uh-huh. Through the rover drone, everybody just hears, duck. Oh, boy. Okay. I am ducked behind cover already, but I don't hear that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't hear that. <laughs> this is going to be great. Uh, Otto, it's your turn. It's very difficult for you to breathe. Difficult or impossible? Uh, impossible, sorry. As if all of the air has suddenly been sucked out of your lungs. You can continue in trying to fight the air, or the, that's not the air, the earth uh, elemental. Ignore what I just said. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, well, I did figure it out before, so I am going to drop uh, my banishment on the earth, and I uh -huh. am going to aim for the air elemental. Okay. I, I picked up on that just as you said it, so I will I will then begin. I was like, what could possibly be taking the air out of my... Oh, oh, oh. What, what could do that? Mm, mm. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to continue banishing this Spirit of Mountain Thingy. Ground Spirit, whatever the hell it is. Ah, that's two successes. Okay, he cancels your successes. Unfortunate, and that's my turn. Okay. Vinny runs over to a crate. Amazing. You're invisible, it's your turn. All right, that's being sustained on uh, one of my foci. 
Do I see Vinny get up and run behind the, the, the crate? He's not running behind the crate. He's running to a crate and flipping the lid off of it. So as he flips the lid off of it, the crate just... I, I want to, like, levitate it and then tilt it to where the opening is facing towards Rover. And then I'm running and hiding behind something. Okay, so you want to just tilt the crate to where it's facing towards everybody. Yeah, towards, towards, towards uh, Rover. Which would be behind Vinny. Spider, it's your turn. Your initial mage target has vanished. Would you switch mage targets now? Because now there are two instead of three. So, I, shouldn't I roll again? Because it's Probab just still shoot the mage. That's now true. Now there's two. That's true. That's true. Now nope, you just instinctively turn. Spider at Vinny. And he stops what he's doing briefly to lean back and then goes back to what he's doing. Bear, it's your turn. Are there fire extinguishers along the walls? Are you looking for one? Yes. Yeah, there's one hanging on the wall. I would like to stay low and out of Vinny's line of sight. Okay. And, like, crawl towards the fire extinguisher. Okay. Can I get to it in this turn? Yes. Okay. I'll uh, break the glass, grab the fire extinguisher, and that's a surprise tool that'll help us later. It's not under glass. It's just hanging on the wall. Ghost, would you like to undelay? Yes, I would. So, since I've yelled, uh... Everybody duck. Duck, yes. That can hear it. Everybody that can hear it. Yes. I, I hope everybody <laughs> ducked because wherever I can guesstimate based on what I see through Rover, uh, mm -hmm. I am going to uh, jump back into the van and uh, I am going to unload with the, uh, the Vulcan cannon. Fire away. The end of this combat turn. All of you except for Bear can kind of faintly hear the whirling sound spin up and then through the door you just hear the punch sounds of something punching through thin steel and then you're watching boxes explode and those of you that are on the ground are being hit with little bits of shrapnel pieces so bear and amazing you have Wood boxes that are kind of exploding, shrapnel going everywhere, plastic pieces, things like that. Uh, those that are up on the catwalk, you can look down it, and you just see this line of gunfire dragged back and forth as bullets are sprayed into the warehouse from outside. Whatever Vinny was about to grab from the box gets struck by a bullet and explodes. So part of the wall, behind Vinny is going to be blown out. Uh, most of the area around him is blown up. Your rover drone needs to roll a body test. Okay, so it gets blown backwards and falls over. You, Bear and Amazing, you're on the ground crawling, so you don't need a test for knockback. Spider and Otto up on the catwalk. Please make me the knockback test. You don't fall over the railing. Predicted. There we go. Okay, well, I'm doing that again. Oh, okay, fire away. Spray of bullets everywhere in an explosion. Okay. Can't see what happened because the drone got knocked over. Everybody Damn. else is is ducked ducked down uh, or or hiding. <laughs> Otto's going to continue to banish. I'm reducing your magic by two. Okay. So that the next test will be more difficult. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, unless you want to end after this. If you want to break the banishing, then you'd have to start all over again. You'd do it right mm -hmm. now and then not suffer the loss to magic. Yes, I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll oh. end. So you end banishing. Yes. Okay, that's all I needed. So Vinny stands up in the fiery... Oh, no, he doesn't stand up. He'd still be uh, laying laying down from the blast. Oh, boy. Uh, he is going to try and shout out at a maging to use his, his wonderful booming voice. Go home, amazing. Just enough to resist. And then it will be your turn. So I I, I see where the, the minigun fire is going, right? Yeah, over your heads. Is it, is it over my head where I jump to? Yes, it fills the whole bottom floor. He was right, firing at about a little about waist level and up. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to crawl so I can get like a line of sight of where Vinny's at. Okay. Do I see him? You can see that there is a, like, bubble of earth. Around him? You assume it's around him. Can't see him past the earthen bubble. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cast Mana Bolt at the, at the earth elemental. 
you may have done damage to the spirit. You have no idea. And then but, uh, I want to yell then... out, uh, shoot it, shoot again, ghost. Just yelling it out loud. Okay. I mean, it comes through on the speakers from the drone, right? And then spider, it's your turn. There's lots of this happened. Yeah. Uh, so I see a giant pile of rocks in the middle of the room. Yes. Is that basically what we're dealing with? Fire uh, flying everywhere? Yep. Yeah, yeah, sounds right. And I hear, I hear a Beijing say to ghost to shoot the rocks, right? Keep firing, yeah. Keep, okay, I said, there we go. Fire the pile of rocks. Fire away. Are you doing a single shot, first shot, full auto? What do you want? Uh, no, this time I'd like to, I'd like to go full auto at the rocks. All right, you pump bullets into this rock. All of them. And then there. I would like to uh, throw my surprise tool towards the pile of rocks and then try and shoot the extinguisher. I know it's not going to explode, but I'm hoping for like a concussive sort of blast to try and knock some of the rocks loose. Okay. Toss and then aim and take your shot. Fires the chemical dispersal out at the the rock pile. What does the roof of this place look like? Is it just uh, like like sheet metal? No, it actually would be like a, a solid roof, like one of the ones you could that has a roof access where you walk around and there um, the air conditioning units that you find on buildings like that. Okay. So it, it's it's solid. Uh, movement to get the rubber drone on its feet. Yeah. Okay. You sacrifice your movement to get it back up on its feet. Um, and I can shoot twice if I don't aim, right? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I'm doing that with the shotgun. Okay, right into fire the shots right into the earthen mound, and you just see chunks of earth fly off of it. I'm don't care about the team anymore. Banishing, they're focusing on the on the earth spirit. Uh, banishing the air spirit because good lord, I need to breathe. You do, yeah. So okay, one success. All right, you reduce it by one. Uh, a major. That earth elemental still up. It is covering the. I'm sure mana bolting at it again. Alrighty. It's still there. All right, movement to uh, maneuver the, uh, the Ares Guardian to wherever that hole is in the wall. Okay. Can I see this pile of like rocks that he's under? Okay, uh, I'm gonna hit that with the laser designator and I'm gonna fire a two round salvo from the mortar launcher. Uh, first one's going to be high explosive to mm-hmm. put a hole in the roof, and the second one's going to be anti-vehicle. You hear a resounding thud, and then the, the ceiling starts to come down. Uh, everybody, please roll me a dodge test if you want to dodge out of the way of the debris of the ceiling. So... Everybody clean dodges except for Spider, who will suffer a light stun from the debris. Sorry. Just pile it on, man. It's fine. It's yeah, fine. yeah, I know. I know. Hey, at least it's only stun, right? Everybody else leaps out of the way uh, as the debris comes down, smashing into the rubble pile on the floor. And just seconds later, you hear the whistling sound coming through the air. And then... Kaboom. Uh, it's still loud enough in, in there uh, for a resounding sound, except for Bear, who can't hear anything. <laughs> uh, I'm going to drop us out of combat after that, because anybody that looks at the rubble pile, there's just now a pile of rubble auto you can breathe again I, i'm gonna give it like i'm gonna give it a few seconds to make sure like yeah sure. there's no more mortars falling or gunshots going off yeah there's just boxes on fire okay uh, I'm, I'm immediately going over and i'm start. I'm, I'm digging through the rubble uh you can find a body laying flat under the rubble there's just a layer of like rock and dirt covering this body that's laying face down. Uh, does it still have a national signature? Uh, signature? It is like, it's like fleeting, like flame going out. 
Okay, well, while he's still technically alive, I am mind probing him for any information on the books. Okay. While he's doing that, can I send the rover drone over to like wherever he was sitting to see if the book is there? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's been scattered onto the floor. So it's not technically where it was originally. <laughs> Are you dropping invisibility, or I, do I just see, like, a corpse sit up? No, you don't see a corpse do anything. You just see rubble cleared off the back of him. You're watching dirt and debris just get moved away, as if on its own. I'm going to go find um, Spider and Amazing. Or, Spider and Auto. I'm going to take a seat and lean against the wall. Now that you can breathe again? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm rest. probably just going to, like, lay there having not completely dodged the rubble and question <laughs> my life choices for, like, the 20th time. Yeah, he has vivid memories of the book and holding it and hearing its whispers from its pages and the promises of, of power that are locked away inside. And how he did, yearns to have that power. Did he uh, bring it with him? Yes, he of course brought it with him. He never leaves it out of his sight. And then any information I can get about the book from his his memory, and then I'll uh, just let him all, fade out. All of his thir- his surface thoughts as he's fading out is, I'm going to live forever. I'm going to live forever. The book's going to let me live forever. I'm never going to die. I'm the best. That's what you're going to get from his surface thoughts. He'll only be alive long enough to get that. He won't be able to dig any deeper. Just dead. Uh, Amazing, you can find it. It's surrounded by a ring of fire. The the fire is not touching it. It should be, though. But it's just surrounded by a ring of fire. Uh, I'm I'm levitating it out, and I'm taking the book. Grabbing it? No, I am levitating this thing back. (laughs) So you just... Flying it in front of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not touching that thing. No, this sure. thing's been a problem this entire freaking. Where you, where you want to take it? Uh, Bear, you can find Spider and Otto just kind of chilling at the top. I'll uh, I'll run up to both of them and just kind of like throw my arms around them and check them for wounds and kind of guide them back out because of the damage to the building. <laughs> Easy there. I've got broken ribs. And probably another concussion. Let's go. I, I, I'm yelling out, we need to leave. As I'm walking out, hovering the book. Okay. Uh, Otto, in the astral, you notice that as uh, Amazing is levitating the book in front of him, the yeah. background the background count icky feeling is following wherever the book goes. Yeah, that's not surprising. All right. I'm just letting Feels you know. <laughs> Feels bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, how are you guys, or where are you guys going? And how are you going there? <laughs> well, as as everybody uh, leaves the building, uh-huh. uh, I'm going to dock both my flyer drones. And okay. once everybody's out of there, uh, I'm going to walk Rover over to the, uh, the rubble pile that Vinny's in. Yeah, and it's just gonna lift up its back leg and uh, shoot some some coolant out all over him, and then scratch its feet, and then I'm gonna recall it back to the car. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm I'm going back to the the van we rode in. So, okay, I as well. Um, are you sitting in the back, <laughs> levitating the bucket in front of you? Um, I'm I'm gonna like sta- try to stash it somewhere in the in the van where nobody can get to it. Okay. Just put it on the floor. I'll set the dog on top of it. All right. That, I okay. was gonna say have Rover hold it. Fine. There you go. It's secured to the floor by the Rover drone. <laughs> and then everybody else piles in, and y'all are heading back to Asgard after that. I don't know if we want to take this thing back there. We got to get rid of this thing. We we need to get a hold of Doolin to take the book. You better call him right now because I want this thing out of my van. So do I. 
I'll call Doolin. Uh, takes a couple rings, and then eventually he'll he'll pick up. Yes. Hey, buddy. Um, I've got something for you. You're not gonna like it. What what is what is what is it? What do you have for me? It's uh, I'm not gonna say over the phone, and I'll I'll drop him a location. I'll just I I'll, I'll I'll meet you back at at your place. We're not going to our place. Not with this thing. I don't see what the, the problem is. You will. Just trust me. If it's what I think it is, I'll just come collect it. No fuss, no fuss. <laughs> Not going back to our place. Are you still hanging out with uh, <laughs> our friend uh, Agent Kevin? I don't know who that is. Sure. Okay. Um, we're not taking this thing home. Uh, oh, yes, mother. I will call you back whenever I get a free moment. I have friends coming over at the moment. <laughs> have a lovely evening and remember to wash your dentures. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Then hurriedly hangs up the phone. So what do you want to do? You have um, this Doolin's, lovely item. Doolin's being watched. He's still got handlers. What about that weird clown guy? Maybe we could give it to him. I mean... That's the worst idea. He could probably get rid of it. I honestly would trust him with the book more than anybody else, honestly. I mean, he seemed to know a lot about this kind of mumbo-jumbo. Just saying. I'll call White Knight, then. Okay. Takes a couple rings. White Knight picks up. Hello? Hey, uh, Mr. WK, it's uh, your old pal Bear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have any jobs for you right now. What do you want? Uh, no, uh, I've got one for you, actually, sort of. Uh, we have recovered a uh, horrific artifact, and uh, we were hoping uh, that maybe Mr. What about that weird clown guy? Maybe we could give it to him. I mean... That's the worst idea. He could probably get rid of it. I honestly would trust him with the book more than anybody else, honestly. I mean, he seemed to know a lot about this kind of mumbo jumbo. Just saying. I'll call White Knight then. Okay. Takes a couple rings. White Knight picks up. Hello? Hey, uh, Mr. WK. It's uh, your old pal Bear. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have any jobs for you right now. What do you want? Uh, no, uh, I've got one for you, actually, sort of. Uh, we have recovered a uh, horrific artifact, and uh, we were hoping uh, that maybe Mr. H could uh, assist in disposing it for the good of the world and all that. Sure, I'll try and send a message and see what happens, but I, I can't give you any guarantee that he'll just be available again. Well, I mean, he, he pops in when he wants to, so maybe he's already listening in on this call. Who knows? I wouldn't put anything past him at this point. Sure. Well, whatever you got there sounds pretty dangerous. I would go to the most securest place you could think of, and, and maybe he'll show up. I, I don't... Uh, like I said, I'll put it out the word, but I, I can't guarantee that he, he'll be in contact again. All right. Well, thanks for your assistance. Sure. And, uh, hey... If you want future work, then get started on that right now. Sounds good. Will do. I'll get back to you as soon as I find anything within your caliber. Uh, well, guys, that's a no-go on Harlequin, probably, too. I think we're going to have to take this thing home, at least temporarily. I could also add one suggestion that you haven't tapped into. I mean, it's a really long shot, but you guys haven't talked to Nemo in a really long time. <laughs> Listen, I I already have plans for a conversation with him, and it's not for that. <laughs> it has absolutely nothing with that. I am not putting that book in his hands. Guys, so let's I, just call Kevin and turn it over to the feds. Hey, there's an option, too. I didn't think of that. Oh. You think that's technology would buy it off of us? Probably. So, yeah, what are you going to do? You're just kind of driving around aimlessly. <laughs> hey, I know this uh, cabin in the woods. It's pretty out there and secure. Where are we going, guys? I don't want to drive around with this nuclear book in the back of my 
car all night. Is there some place that you could lock it up at Asgard, Amazing? Temporarily. All right, let's do that. All right, you guys. Head on back to Asgard. A nice, quiet stay, as opposed to what you just had to deal with. And that is where this episode ends. Hey, Chummers, thanks again for spending your time with us this week. We appreciate all of you who enjoy our shows and keep coming back for more every single week. Uh, for those of you guys that watch on YouTube, uh, do us a favor. Go give us a five-star rating on one of our audio platforms. And if you are an audio-only listener, please stop on over to our YouTube and give us a like and subscribe. Uh, all that stuff really does help us out and helps us reach other people who might be interested in Shadowrun who maybe don't know about us. Additionally, if you are enjoying our content and want to go above and beyond in supporting us to help us keep making cool Shadowrun stories for you, you can support us over on patreon.com slash critical underscore hits. Uh, the patrons are how we pay the bills around here, and without you guys, we couldn't keep this, this podcast ad-free, so we appreciate all of you. You guys are the heroes. So a big thank you to runners like Crimson Gecko Bear, The Rogue 404, The Absolute Drexstorm Podcast, Tim, John, Tommy, Martin, Michael, Niles, Flatty One Gaming, Manic, Sander, Winter, Jim, The Musician, Shadow Dagger, Oliver, Ancient Relic, Rende, The What the Dice Podcast, Dat Booty, Techno Druid, Con 9000, MS, Travis, and Asthma Admiral. We appreciate all you guys helping us to keep bringing you stories every single week. Without the community like you, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you all so, so much. Again, if you're interested in supporting us, five new yen a month is all it takes, chummers. Patreon.com slash critical underscore hits, and you get all kinds of uh, exclusive content, like access to our Worm Talk episodes, where patrons get to post questions, and the cast or the guests we have that week will answer them on the podcast. If we have digital downloads like character art, when we get it made, season two character art coming out soon, folks. You get access to that as well. Uh, we're doing some community NPC crafting for season three, so if you want to get in on that, you can do it on the Patreon. And, of course, you get your patron shout-out at the end of every single Sinless episode. So thank you all so much. We appreciate all of you listening, and we're looking forward to another great season. That's going to do it, though, for this episode. One more to go in the in the books, and then uh, Season 2 will be over with. We thank you all again, and we will see you in the shadows, chummers. The Topps Company Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logo, artwork, marks, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Tops Company Inc. is granted permission to Critical Hits to use such names, logos, artwork, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Critical Hits in any official capacity whatsoever.